Welcome everyone, I am Adriana and today with the help of Leonardo we are going to look at this Samsung Galaxy A71 that has suffered water damage, it has fallen into the water. In today's tutorial we are going to go over the steps we need to follow to try to rescue it. The first trick I want to share with you is that, upon receiving a water damage device in your workshop, the first thing you should do is to disconnect the battery connector. By doing this, we prevent possible short circuits on the motherboard, which could further aggravate the damage to the device. Using a plastic pick, we proceed to remove the middle case. It's important to remember to use plastic, not metal, to avoid further damaging the device. The final step of this initial stage is to remove the motherboard for a preliminary visual inspection. Here we can see a rather large humidity stain which clearly indicates that the water has reached here. However, at the bottom of the motherboard we do not find signs of humidity which is good news. Turning the motherboard over we can see that the metal covers are in a good condition which allows us to make a more accurate diagnosis of the device condition. We proceed to analyze the motherboard in detail with the help of the microscope checking each component for traces of humidity or additional damage. Here we find a burnt component. To remove the resin that covers it, we apply 220 Celsius degrees with the hot air station. Clean the area using isopropyl alcohol or contact cleaner, both products are effective for this task. Internationally, we can find the WD-40 brand in any DAI store. Using a tester, we check this component that seems to have lost part of its properties due to the humidity. We can observe that the FPC connector, which is the screen connector, is burned. We will deal with this problem shortly.
Now we are going to check the operation of the motherboard. For this step, I use a precision power laboratory supply and the Power Z tool. This tool helps us to check the motherboard's consumption and can be purchased through the link I provide you in the video description. We just have to press the power button and analyze the consumption. In the course that we uploaded on the YouTube platform, we delve much deeper into this process. Each week we have more views and in this way new students learn our work philosophy. In summary, we can observe on the graph on the left a high consumption state which is when the mobile is working with most application and processes at 100%. On the right we have the device in power saving mode and we can see how consumption decreases even reaching around 5 million periods. With this graph we can affirm with 99% certainty that the motherboard is working correctly. Now we are going to try to save the screen connector and the charging module. To do this we use a piece of cotton socket in contact cleaner. To clean and shine the connector we use a GBC metal brush. With delicacy we remove any oxidized residue that may be left on the surface. At this point we detect a damaged path that needs to be repaired. As always we apply a little bit of flux and then we go over the damaged path with the tip of the soldering iron at 350 Celsius degrees. We can use solder paste or solder wire, both are effective. <laughs> Now we focus on charging module. We will remove the rust in the same way we did with the screen connector. Using a scalpel we scrape the damaged pad. If we don't scrape the pad we won't get the solder to hold and seal the pad with the motherboard's pad. We always need to see the cooper of the pad. If you want to earn a good salary repairing mobiles you should invest in the good microscope. In this way all the jobs can be done more simply and effectively. Below in the video description I will leave you some purchase links. Another test we can perform is to check the voltage at the battery connector with the help of the tester. For this measurement I use the Fluke brand tester model 289. If you are just starting out in the mobile repairs you can start with the cheap testers for 5 or 10 euros. That's how we all started and over time you can invest in professional tools if you wish. We can observe a good charge on the motherboard connector. Therefore, we are going to measure the battery connector to see if the battery has charged. We can see that the battery has a good voltage of 3.8 volts, which means that the device should power on.
Let's test the device. As we can see, we don't get an image on the screen, so the solution to this problem will be to install a new screen. After confirming the repair with the client, we proceed to install an original Samsung Service Pack screen. Now it's time to check all the device function. We can see that the device powers on correctly, so we are going to check how much charge it has. With the help of the power Z, we can observe the 5 volts and 1.8 amperes, which is an optimal charge for this device. Guys, he is Leonardo and that's all for today. See you in the next video. Greetings to all. I hope this detailed and enriched tutorial will be very useful to you.